for 2019, the Ford Edge received a facelift as well as performance tuning from Ford's performance division. And while some people might want a performance crossover, not everybody does. Our spotlight is on this 2019 Ford Edge Titanium with the Elite package. This really is the best of the best without going up to the Sport. Now there are some changes for 2019, including the front end, has a little bit more of a Ford Explorer look to it, but there's a new eight speed automatic transmission on this and three important new safety technologies for this vehicle, including a post collision braking system. So if you're in an accident, the car will stop itself after you've been hit. There's evasive steering assist. So if it detects that there's a car in front and you're trying to swerve out of the way, it will help you do that properly. And you also have adaptive cruise control with full stop and go and lane centering. Now we're going to go over everything about this car and go over everything you need to know if you're in the market for a mid-size two-row crossover. Before we jump into our spotlight, I want to give a big thanks to Yerjo Ford here in Actonville. They're actually our local Ford dealership here in town where our world studios are located. And a big thanks to them for allowing us to film this because you guys actually asked for this specific trim. Ford has both actually, they do have the Titanium and the ST on their press fleet, but it was a little easier for us to be able to get in here and feature this one because everybody does want to see what the non-performance version has to offer while Ford is trying to pump out the SD one. So again, big thanks to Yerjo for helping us with this video. There's a lot of stuff going on with this mid-size crossover. And again, it is one of the few that is a only two row sold here in North America, something like the Jeep Grand Cherokee or even the new Hyundai Santa Fe, because the Santa Fe XL is essentially the old version of it and it's being replaced with the new Palisade. So there aren't a lot of two row only crossovers sold in North America this being one of them and this being a very popular option for people up here in Canada, especially since it is built in Oakville, Ontario. So it is a Canadian assembled vehicle. Now on the front, you have automatic by LED headlights with LED fog lights and LED daytime running lights. Excellent points for that. You have rain sensing wipers, a backup camera with front parking sensors and rear parking sensors, along with another camera on the front, which gives you a 180 degree view on the front end. The Titanium Elite package, which is what we have here, is probably the one that most people are going to be looking at if you really want the best experience for the Ford Edge. You get 20-inch aluminium rims along with the lower fascia, side cladding on the front and the back and around the car, all body colored with a chrome strip around it. Really gives this car a premium look over just the unpainted plastic version from other models and other trim levels. When you get the Titanium Elite, you also have the 301A package, which adds Ford's Copilot 360 Assist Plus. It is a hands-on driver assistance system to allow you to be a little bit more in control when you're on the highway if you need it. Things like lane centering, active cruise control all go into that. You also have enhanced active park assist with perpendicular and parallel parking and a hands-free rear lift gate. And as I mentioned, the front grille is really the biggest change for 2019. The rest of the car really does make sense. Again, a premium look with the Titanium Elite package on it. There isn't too much to surprise on the outside. The LED lighting is a huge plus. Again, we did feature very briefly in 2016, 2017, but let's pretend that episode didn't happen. Let's jump inside now, go over the features on the inside, and then we'll take it on a road test. The first thing you're going to notice when you get into the Ford Edge, especially at this trim level, is the entry exit seating system. Not only do your seats move into your position that you had it at, but also you have a power steering wheel. We don't usually find that anymore on a lot of vehicles. A lot of manufacturers just like to put a manual adjustment for it, so it's nice to have. You can pull it in or out, tilt up and down, great features there. Plus, it's got the memory option too, which is a nice plus. The steering wheel is also heated, which we would hope to expect to find at this price point anyway, but it is there. Interior is full leather seating, heated and ventilated front seats, heated outboard rear seats. You have a dual zone automatic climate control system, a 12 speaker Bang & Olufsen premium sound system. That's a nice plus to have on this vehicle. And then tons of extra tech you would expect to find. Wireless phone charging, home link, even ambient lighting. Great things to have. You also have an 8 inch Sync 3 navigation system with Sirius XM, Apple CarPlay 
and Android Auto. We've talked about it on a number of other Ford and Lincoln products that we've tested so far. The screen is angled a little high. We have noticed that with some manufacturers, so it could be a good thing or not, depending on how you like your screen set up, but it is angled up a little bit. However, at least it is built in to the center here. A lot of people don't like the tablet style devices that they kind of stick on top as an afterthought. This one's actually integrated into it with easy controls to be able to pull up your camera, which is a huge plus. Do you know how many cars I drive where you can't easily get to the controls for the camera system when you need them? Great thing to have there. A couple other things to note before we get onto our road test, you do have three memory options for the driver's seat profile. Ford's Vista roof up top, it's a panoramic sunroof, lets in tons of light and everything else makes sense in the car. I'm pretty comfortable in here. Good seating position, visibility is good all around. Seats are comfortable and you have lots of room here. I mean, I'm not in the position I would be for driving. This is just how the car was dropped off. But essentially when we get it set up, I'll have tons of space. You have good leg room in the back since this is only a two row. If you're looking at it because you're a family of three or four, you're gonna have lots of space for your family. You don't have to worry about bumping shoulders or anything like that. Good space in here for a mid-size crossover. Now let's take it on our road test, go over how this vehicle performs with its 2.0-liter EcoBoost engine and the new 8-speed transmission, and everything else you need to know about the 2019 Ford Edge Titanium Elite. So the absolute first thing you're going to notice when you start driving the Ford Edge is the gear knob. It's not a lever, it's not a button, it is a turnstile knob, and if you know where it is, it works well. I mean, it's not in the way where you'd be going for your HVAC controls or music controls. It's up far enough away, you don't have to worry too much about it, and it works well. You have a button to be able to go into sport mode, pulls up a little tachometer on your left screen, and you can get up to speed pretty quick. And we're not going to be going super fast here. This is literally the newest car we've ever driven. When I started up, it had 4.7 kilometers on it. We're now at 5.4 kilometers. So obviously we're not going to be doing any performance testing with it. The car hasn't even really burnt off anything that would have been on the engine to protect it from rust corrosion, things like that. So the car is not going to get driven very hard today. But the idea for this car anyway is to be driven comfortably. That's the whole point of buying the Titanium Elite over something like the Edge ST. You're going to be driving more leisurely in this vehicle and that's fine. That's the whole reason why Ford makes two vastly different versions of this vehicle and why I think it's very important for us to actually feature the one that I think most people are going to be looking at. Now technically probably most people will end up buying the SE or SEL but having the Titanium Elite really is a good option to see what the most out of this vehicle is without having to go up to the total performance version of it. That always works out well going through this rough area of the entire part of Canada, that is Quebec, so we can really get an idea of how the suspension is. The car's pretty solid on the road. I don't feel too much of the road as we go around even the corners here. It does have torque vectoring control on the two liter EcoBoost engine. And power-wise, I mean, it's not the most powerful. It has 245 horsepower, 275 pound-feet of torque. So I wouldn't say that it is the most powerful, especially compared to the ST, but then it's also not bad either, considering some of the larger vehicles now in the larger side of the mid-size crossover market have roughly about the same power. So I wouldn't worry too much if you're getting onto the highway, you have to pass people merging into traffic, things like that. You should be good with the amount of power that this car has. And so far, I mean, we've been pretty impressed with all of Ford's EcoBoost engines. We've driven a number of them over the last two years now. So we have a pretty good idea of what they have to offer, how they perform, and everything that really goes into the drive of those engines. The eight-speed transmission, though, is the important factor here because that is new for 2019. You barely feel it shifting there. Again, I think it's into third or fourth. Ooh, there, probably fifth now. Like, it's really smooth. You know, we're not in sport mode. We're not doing any performance testing with it. So, you know, I'm sure if we had it in sport mode, you'd feel it a little bit more. But again, the idea of buying the Titanium is to have a very comfortable drive experience. You don't really want to be feeling those shifts. You want it to just be in the background. You don't really want to have to worry about it. That definitely is the case with the transmission here. It's very smooth. We have talked at length actually with a number of other vehicles from Ford and General Motors. They collaborated to build 9 and 10 speed automatic transmissions that we've started to see on things like the F-150. This isn't using that transmission, it's interesting. Another thing to note about the engine setup here, you do have an auto stop start system. There is a button to turn it off. Now we did mention some of the new safety tech that has been implemented for this car. Obviously I can't really test the evasion assist system, I'm not going to be 
purposely driving towards a car that stopped and veering out of the way. I also can't test the post collision system because that would be a really bad thing to go back to the dealership with. But the point is there's a lot of good tech going on there. Active cruise control is something that we've seen in a lot of other cars. So it's nice to have it with the lane centering and Ford's Copilot 360 assist system. You have a little bit more control if you need it. You really need to use it if you don't want to. All the controls can be turned off if you ultimately don't want them. But I have to say, I mean, power delivery is good. The steering, I'm, I'm really impressed with it. You know, I actually had a Ford as my first car. Some of you may not know that, but my absolute first car that was mine in my name was a 1983 Ford LTD Crown Victoria. So I always do have a little bit of a soft spot when it comes to Ford vehicles. And I gotta say, it's a nice car. It drives pretty well. Handling is good for a mid-size crossover. I think that it is a good option for people who don't want something that's as you know, rugged and aggressive as the Jeep Grand Cherokee. And if you want something that's a little bit bigger on the inside than your typical compact, then this is a good option for you. Plus, if you don't need the space in the back for passengers, but rather cargo, that trunk space is huge. You got tons of space back there to be able to put whatever you need. Fold the seats flat with the little buttons on the side too, makes it even easier to load things in and out. But yeah, just to wrap it up, I mean, I am very comfortable sitting here in these seats. The ventilation's on just because I like to have it on for this time. Since we're not taking the car on an extended drive, I don't have it for a week. I'm not gonna go over things that we like or dislike. Same thing with fuel economy. We absolutely never talk about the posted numbers that a manufacturer gives. We only do our own testing. And since I can't do it with this vehicle, we're not gonna talk about it. But again, I want to give a big thanks to Yerjo Ford here in Actonville for letting us film this video. As I mentioned, you guys requested that we do this car, and I'm happy to have made it happen, especially in this color combination at this trim level. I think it really represents probably the best of the best that you can get, especially, like I said, not going up to the full ST model.